Lawrence, extra dimensions have entered the public consciousness uh, from everywhere. science fiction everywhere. But in recent years, it has become real science. You've been a pioneer in this thinking. Tell us about extra dimensions. Okay, Are they I'm real? Not, I'm, not, I'm not sure it's real science. When he said real, it's a little strong. It's science, but we're not sure yet whether they're real. The idea of extra dimensions has been around for a long time in different contexts. And uh, uh, it's hard for people to picture extra dimensions, after all, because we live in three-dimensional space, and it's hard to picture a four-dimensional space. Just as a two-dimensional being, like in the famous book Flatland, couldn't picture a, a three-dimensional world. And, and, uh, and that was in the 1870s. In fact, that was, by the way, the time when the idea of extra dimensions really began to get exciting to both artists and writers and scientists. Uh, and partly it was due to the fact that there was a, the discovery that electricity and magnetism were really different manifestations of the same force ultimately caused Einstein to recognize that the only way to that, that one person's electricity could be another person's magnetism, depending upon how they were moving with respect to one another, would be if space and time were somehow relative, if somehow a little bit of my space was a little bit of your time and vice versa. And that was recognized by one of Einstein's teachers, in fact, the mathematician Minkowski, that that, that was only possible if space and time were tied together in a, in a four-dimensional universe, where time was a little bit different than space, but nevertheless, they were tied together in a four-dimensional universe. But and this is not just metaphor. No, this is exact. Space and time really are, do form what's called a Minkowski space. We live in a four-dimensional universe. We really do live in a universe of three dimensions of space and one dimension of time that are tied together. But that dimension of time is different than space. You can't, you can't walk into the time direction and come back, okay, as far as we know. And that means that we don't live in this four-dimensional space that we're, where you can go in that extra dimension and, and have lunch and come back. And... It, by the way, I sh in spite of that, artists and writers got fascinated by this idea of four dimensions and used wonderful short stories and wonderful science fiction about a fourth dimension. I could go, if there were a fourth dimension, I could do surgery on you without ever opening you up. I could just go into the fourth dimension, take out your appendix and come back. Take, come back. It'd be wonderful if it were possible. But that, so that fourth dimensional idea was the beginning in science of, of, of the idea that we have more, more out there than meets the eye. But in fact, it really began to take hold in the 1960s uh, when new particle accelerators were coming online and there was a host of new elementary particles being discovered and it just seemed like chaos. And more than that, the theories that people began to develop to try to explain that were chaotic. They produced nonsense. They produced infinities. And it was recognized that one way around it was to assume that elementary particles themselves were maybe not particles, but at some small scale behave kind of like strings. Because if that was the case, you could tame those mathematical infinities, but not tame them in four dimensions. It turned out the only way you could tame them is if there were a few extra dimensions, not one, not two, but 22 extra dimensions. And I find it fascinating that physicists were so terrified by these infinities that even in the 1960s, they began to take the idea of 22 extra dimensions seriously. Real extra dimensions, Real. not mathematical not, metaphors. Well, I, well, often mathematical metaphor becomes real. And, and the question is, what, which is which? And, and that's, that's what turn, makes it into physics. And we want to find out. But they were willing to believe they were real and ultimately might have physical effects. That ended in the 1970s when we, can, in fact, came up with a different theory that ex happened to explain all those experiments, get rid of the infinities, and it was beautiful. But it was revitalized in the 1980s when it was discovered that that same theory that had been thrown out actually naturally produced something that looked very much like gravity. Now, the big problem of the 20th century and the 21st century, perhaps, is that gravity and qu quantum mechanics don't mix. They don't work together. General relativity and quantum mechanics just don't work. But here was a quantum theory that somehow had gravity embedded in it, apparently. So potentially, this was a quantum theory of gravity. And when that was discovered in 1984, that's when everything went wild and tons of physicists began to think seriously about these extra dimensions. And the question is, where are they? Well, if we don't see them, maybe they're very, very small. That was the idea for much of the 20th century. Maybe they're curled up into such a small scale that we can't measure them. Compactified. Compactified <laughs> is the word. The question is why, and the answer is we don't know. <laughs> and so that's, that's been part of the issue, but it turns out that more recently, people have begun to consider the possibility that maybe there are other ways to hide those extra dimensions that are make them more interesting.
maybe they could actually be large. And part of the reason to try to understand that was that one of the big mysteries in science is that gravity is much, much weaker than the normal rest of the forces in nature. It may not feel like it to you when you wake up in the morning and try and get out of bed. But gravity is by far weaker than the other forces in nature. It's a famous example. Go up to the top of a building, throw a friend off or an enemy off. It takes gravity all that distance, 200 feet, to get them down to the ground. But what stops them in the end? Electricity and magnetism, because it's the electric forces between the atoms in your hand and the floor that stop you. Most of it's empty space. It's just force. You don't even leave a dent in the concrete. So electricity and magnetism stop you in fraction of an inch. Gravity accelerates you all the way down. Why is gravity so weak? Maybe it's weak because some of it's leaking out into extra dimensions. So if you and I are constrained to live in our three-dimensional space and one dimension of time, but somehow gravity can probe those extra dimensions, then maybe those extra dimensions could be large and you could explain the weakness of gravity. The final interesting aspect of these large extra dimensions is if they're large enough, maybe, maybe we can do experiments at high enough energy so when we bang things together, some of that energy will leak off via gravity into those extra dimensions and we might actually experimentally probe it so this stops being metaphysics and becomes <laughs> physics. Well, do you think that's likely? I wouldn't bet on it. I, I, I think it smells wrong, but uh, it's certainly fun to work with.